along comes this eccentric Dutch inventor named Carl Norton, who goes to the US military uh, just before the outbreak of the Second World War. And he says, I've solved the, civic pro the, the physics problem. Give me a couple hundred million dollars and I will produce for you thousands and thousands and thousands of these contraptions that allow you to mechanically enter all of the variables that will affect the flight of a bomb and land a bomb with perfect accuracy where you want to land it. And my story is about the group of people who fall in love with the potential of that analog computer and who realize, oh, wait a minute, that could allow us to reinvent war. In Webster's dictionary, uh, there is not Obamaism, there is not Bushism, there is not Trumpism, but there is Reaganism. Reaganism, he would contend, and a lot of uh, scholars would contend, and I contend, is a separate, distinct, and individual ideology all of itself. It's more of a, a hybrid between libertarianism, conservatism, uh, and, uh, and and other elements that go into it. it. It was his own philosophy, and he enacted many much of it uh, when he was president. Not all of it, to be sure, but uh, he had a he had a different view of the world than most other politicians did at the time then or do have it now. Every time I spoke about Alzheimer's, the conversation eventually shifted to memory and forgetting in general. And I found that folks over the age of 40, definitely over the age of 50, are all really kind of freaked out, stressed out, worried, ashamed of everyday moments of normal forgetting, but they don't know it's normal. So they think that, you know, especially after a certain age, every time I walk into a room and can't remember why I went in there, or I can't come up with the name of the actor in that movie I saw last week, I can't remember the name of the movie. I went to the store to buy milk and I came home with a bunch of groceries and no milk. People start to worry that this is a sign of impending dementia, especially if they have a loved one with Alzheimer's. And so the intention became you know, I can, we have enough to stress about in this world. If I can take this off of people's plates, like you don't have to stress about these things. This is a normal outcome of how our human brains are designed. When you think of what's needed to make war, the mobilization, not just of people, but of resources, the control of those resources, the control of the people, the disciplining of, of those you want to fight, the direction of often very large numbers of people, this seems to me to take tremendous organization. And as you pointed out um, in your book, The Shield of Achilles, this has driven ahead or certainly drove ahead the organization of states, that it became necessary for states to acquire greater and greater power, partly in order to fight wars, but of course, the more successful they were in wars, the more powerful they often became. And so I, I've always thought it's very difficult to say which comes first. Uh, war or the high level of organized states.